Hello people out there and welcome back to Fat Lads Going Gold. We're back just like we said we'd be back and I'm your host and fat lad with a god complex, Mark Watson. I'm joined for Meeting with the Mayor Part 4, Mr Dan Ivory. How are you doing, mate? Um, would you believe for a stuff my feet? Um, um, you seem a bit rushed, yeah. Some yeah, news it's, it's gone all, on or something. Yeah, it's all been a bit manic. i um, struggling to sleep at the moment because the amount of, sh- uh, the amount of sh- shite turning around the old noggin. So um, yeah, it's all fun, isn't it? It's all fun. It is all fun. It is all fun. Um, we've got a million and one questions. I asked for questions about a week ago and got a, a smallish response. Asked for questions about an hour ago and my phone just blew up. It's been insane. So um, we'll try and rattle through them as, as much as we can because in the meantime, I've written a mega shit ton of my own questions. Uh, before we kick in, I just want to say a massive thank you from me um, for everyone that donated to the Libby Mays Little Angels um, shirt giveaway. Uh, we raised, we raised 300 and something pound. I forget the exact total. Um, but someone then matched that donation. So in total, we raised just over 700 pound for Libby May's Little Angels, which is phenomenal. I, I, I thought a hundred, I'd be happy to get 700. Every single person that donated, shared, did anything with that, that post and that campaign, you're amazing. And thank you. You've, you've helped change lives and, and yeah, I love you all to bits. Um, but Let's kick into other changes. So, Dan, a bit's gone on since we last spoke. Yeah, just a bit, hasn't it? Just a bit. Um, I, I don't really know where you want to start. We, I've got questions on BSHL, questions on the Stock Exchange, questions on my right. best mate, Neil Moxley. Where do you want let's, to start? Let's start about the Stock Exchange, those on, dreaded shoot. four letters, H-K-S-E. Yes. Um, now, do you want to ask the questions or do you want me to tell you a little bit first? Let's, uh, let me look through my questions and see what I'm, I'll tell you what, we'll start with the most obvious question. This is from Chris on Twitter at CHR15GB. Has there been any update on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange yet? No. No. Uh, as of close play Tuesday, nothing. Do you want to just explain why that matters, why that's important, what that's yeah. got to do with anything? Right. So there's a lot of misinformation on Twitter at the moment. A lot of people say, no, they, they don't need to uh, notify the stock exchange until it's done. It's just a subsidiary, so they don't have to do it. Bollocks. Just to, now, to, to cut you off then, just, I'll give you what I think the stock exchange issue yeah. is, and you tell yeah. me why I'm wrong. So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. in my mind, if you've got a business and you're about to sell it on, do whatever, that's going to affect the share prices. If you don't mm-hmm. notify people of that sale... Any trading done during that period is insider trading. That's how my mind works, and that's what I think it is. That's that, that's exactly right. Right. Okay. So, um, what I, the easiest way to do is to use an example. Go on. To use, um, so a lot of people think Birmingham City's situ- situation is unique, and it is in some ways. But in others, it isn't. We are not right. the first club to be sold by a Hong Kong stock exchange company. Okay. Um, yeah, a couple of years ago, Wigan Athletic was sold by uh, a company called um, International Entertainment Corporation. Now, ignore the bit about them being sold and immediately dumped into admin because that was horrific and yeah. we don't want that to happen. We don't even want to think about that. But because it was um, sold by a Hong Kong listed company, all the information is still there online and you can see the actual process, which is wonderful. So if you go back to, uh, if you go onto the Stock Exchange website and look for IEC, whose stock code is 1009, so you go back to November 2019, there's a notification where they said, uh, this announcement is made pursuant to Rule 1309 of the listing rules. Uh, we're in negotiations with someone to sell Wigan Athletic. Right. Not, we've finalised the sale. We're in negotiations. So that's the uh, very this, beginning of the talk. Not quite, no. No, it's no. Just that they've entered into an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, not. and that there is a period of due diligence going on. Now, from John Percy's piece that was written, uh, was it Sunday or Monday? Hmm. John Percy used the exact words that uh, a period of exclusivity had been gone into, uh, been, uh, entered and that the, buyer, uh, the, the would-be buyers are um, um, conducting due diligence right let me stop you there because you've used three terms the first one was that one that began with m what does that mean memorandum of understanding what does that um mean? it's kind of like the rules it's okay. it's like the rules of how it's going to be it's not the actual contract but it's like yeah you know we're going to we're going to negotiate a contract and these are the rules we're going to negotiate under right so, okay. you know, it's it's like it's like the, the outline agreement as it were okay and the exclusivity is that a Means suggestion that, that only one person one there's yeah. one bid on the table 
Yeah, it's it's it, what what is known as a preferred bidder. So uh, basically, that they're, they're not talking to anyone else; they're only talking to this guy. Right. And due diligence is when they go in and look through all the books and go, Jesus Christ, what are we buying out? <laughs> yeah, this is a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Run. <laughs> but the thing is, that had to be announced to the stock exchange because, as you quite rightly point out, it's um, it's an event that that can affect the share price. Mm. And shareholders have to be aware of all the risks they are undertaking when they're buying or selling shares. It's just mm. the way it is. So, yeah, uh, International Entertainment Corporation did that in November 2019, said, yeah, w- w- we're going to sell Wigan, maybe. It mm. wasn't until February of 2020, I think it was Valentine's Day, they actually said, yes, we've agreed terms. Right. Um, we are going to sell it and um, we're going to put it through. You know, we're, we're going to have to follow the protocol now. We're going to have to send out details to shareholders, have a meeting so we get shareholder approval and then it's done. Mm. Now, that is not a short process. So... They they made this announcement on Valentine's Day that they were going to do that they were going to start the process, and it wasn't finished till the 29th of May, three and a half months later. Right. Now that is uh, for a transaction that's actually smaller than the Birmingham City one is because it's not the whole company. They weren't going to lose the whole company by selling it, mm. and it was a bit less complex. There were a couple of hiccups on the way, but it just goes to show that from the sale being agreed to actually being done is not a formality. Well, it's not something that takes like a week. Mm. It is in many ways a formality because it's just like ticking boxes and whatnot. And it's not like the EFL did anything on that, you know, checking <laughs> who the owner was going to be. And it took three and a half months. Um, mm. Now, I thought about it. And I thought, well, okay, so this is, this is a football club, yeah, but it's, it's not like a, a deal like, but um, City, it's not like something that's so big they're basically selling the whole of the everything that, that makes money for the listed company. So I had a look through uh, last night and I found a company called Art Group Holdings who are stock code 565. And last April, they basically went, right, we're going to sell this company, this, this subsidiary, and it's basically 90% of what we do. Same as Birmingham City Football Club. So that that's right. Yeah, just to... Clarity, nothing to do with Wigan at this point. It's just a random, no, no, no. The, random the, company on just, stock exchange. Just a random, right, separate random it. company yeah. that was that was trying to use as a comparison. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're going to sell ninety percent of our company to this company. This is how we're going to do it. Made an announcement in April, finished it in June. So it only took two months. The problem was, at the same time, they bought a very large company. So they they shoved one out and brought one in. Mm. The moral of this story is both companies got. Uh, had to get all their ducks in a row to do this properly. Now, people talk about us getting behind the bidders, back the bid, the, mm. the real deal, Tesco meal deal, whatever. It's not about the bidders. I'm sure that Keith Harris, for example, is, is an experienced financier, an ex-merchant banker. He knows what he's doing. Mm. I'm sure that's not a problem. We are at the mercy of the competence of permanent sports holdings. Do we... Well, yeah, say that again. Do we know if Keith Harris has operated with companies on the hong Stong, hong kong stock exchange before i don't i don't know if he has or not but i don't believe it will be a, i don't believe he'll be a problem right. i believe he is very aware of the complexities right. and while it might not have been communicated well by uh, neil moxley or by uh, john percy i believe harris knows the score and right. i'm i've got trust in him i've got trust in him um, you know i think that if it was an ordinary time if ordinary deal I wouldn't have a problem, but because of the complexities of the stock exchange, I can see it being an issue. So this, Once we this get... sorry, this suggestion from Moxley that it will be done within a month, Mm-mm. you don't see? No, I, I could see them agreeing a sale and purchase agreement in like a week, right. two weeks. That shouldn't be... T- the, the, the hardest part of the problem is going to be from uh, Birmingham Sports Holdings convincing the stock exchange that they can do it. That's going to be the, the, part, the biggest part of the problem. That's not on the buyer. That's on the seller. So, as I say, we're at the whim of mm. the competence of Birmingham Sports Holdings, and that's what you know. People, fans can say, "Oh, I'm working day and night. I'm helping this bid." Well, unless you're an accountant working with Birmingham Sports Holdings or a lawyer working for them, you ain't doing shit, pal. So, with the the listing, am I right in thinking that follows the club? What do you mean? So they sell the blues, they lose the listing. If they don't put anything else in, correct. Can they replace Blues with something else, or does it have to be replace Blues with an already listed company? No, no, no. They can they they can get any business they want, and they can put it in to replace Blues. So if they if they've got a business, say like I don't know, like um 
like a taxi company in Taiwan that's worth 20 million quid. Yeah. They could swap it out. That wouldn't be an issue. Does that not need approval? They could replace it for a thimble factory in Timbuktu well, or Well, yes, it would It would need shareholder approval, yes. And the stock exchange would probably look at it if it was like like a thimble factory in Timbuktu and say, mm. do you really think this is worth 20 million pounds? Right, can, okay. we, can we, you know, kick... Yeah, there, there, there's going to have to be, you know, a little bit of regulatory oversight there. But yeah, it doesn't have to be a listed company. All they've got to do is find a, a suitable business to put in. That's it. So with the the listing, will whoever buys Birmingham City um, by default get a listing on the stock exchange as well? No, no, they're so, not buying the listing. They're only buying the club. So is Birmingham City sort of almost classed as the product rather than the company? Yeah, sell I, the products. I, it, I think the, the best analogy it. of this is it's like a transfer for a football player. I'm with you. Okay. So like, um, so uh, we're, we're uh, um, Boeing Sports Holdings, a Boeing City Football Club, looking to sell, um, looking to sell Harley Dean, and the fans only wants him, mm. but because we haven't got any defenders, they need to buy a defender at the same time to fill the gap, so mm. that the, you know the, the, there's enough players in the team, and like um, a transfer. You can't think it's done until the guy's holding the scarf from the cup because yeah. it's not done. And well, I thought I, I thought part of the reason they bought this club in the first place was for the stock exchange listing. Uh, if that doesn't I believe come with so, the, yeah. But if that doesn't come with the club, how did how were they? Well, did well, so, so they didn't buy the club. They bought they the bought listing. The, the, the company. The club. Ca- right. The club came with the listing. Right. On the the club was a, the club was you know just like a, a bit of a. Uh, an attachment they right. didn't buy the club paul swain did not buy the club he bought the listing and the oh, club really. was just attached to it just part of it like yeah buying a football club and the players are attached to it essentially got it got it, got in, it one. in one got it in one a uh, question from miles at mmck 231101 uh, a question for dan when he has the pleasure of talking to everyone's favorite ryan woods look alike mm, that'd sound better looking but whatever um how long will it take between the Hong Kong Stock Exchange announcement and new owners, I appreciate that might be a bit like saying how long is a piece of string. Yeah, so, it is. It is like how how long is a piece of string. So the the, the ones that I showed that the, the examples I've talked about, the Wigan one took for uh, three and a half months, the other one took two months. I think the minimum time it can take is two months. Um, right. Any hiccups, and it just gets longer and longer and longer. And that's from when the initial we've agreed to sell, and they've agreed to buy. Uh, announcement comes out so where do you think moxley's got this month thing from has he got carried away is it a lack of understanding of the hong kong stock exchange uh, has I, he I, been lied to perhaps no or, i don't think he's been li- I, don't, I, I don't believe he's been lied to i no. think I, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest with you um i neil's a smart guy I, i'm sure that you know he knows that it's a thing but not many people know the full like it, 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 it. Not many people know the full complexities. And if you're told, "Oh yeah, we can do a sound purchase," you know, we can get the agreement together in four weeks. You think, "Oh yeah, four weeks," hmm. but that doesn't mean you can get the whole thing done in four weeks. You know, it might be a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, maybe. But I don't, I don't believe he's, um, I don't believe he's trying to actively lie to us or anything like that. I just think, you know, there's a miscommunication, hmm. and I think it's the same with Percy. And I think. I listened to um, Talk Sport today, for example. I listened to Ian Danter, who's a, a top guy, a blues fan, you know, who brings the um, the, the club to a, a bigger audience. Mm. And he, does, he, you know, he's a great guy, but even he slips up. And it's not because he's stupid. It's not because he doesn't know. It's because it's really fucking complex. Mm. And to hold the detail, like, I'm what somewhat autistic. That's the only reason I can hold it in my head. You know, I've got a memory for facts and figures and dates, and yeah, I'm really boring, and I and I remember stuff. You don't have a TV. I don't have a TV. No. What kind of nutter doesn't have a TV. Um. Also, uh, this one from Mick at Mick Cox ninety four. I've seen Dan mention a few times that if the announcement isn't made by the Hong Kong Stock Exchange soon, then BSHL face breaching the rules. Just wondering what the consequences for this are and how they could affect the club. Right. So right now, I believe the BSH can breach the rules because um, there, there's loads of stuff out in the press saying exclusivity, saying due diligence, saying all this and that, saying that the club have appointed, or, or even I think Percy said Birmingham Sports Holdings have appointed Harris. That's right. all like, that's all pretty stuff. Stuff that should be notified. All it's going to take is someone to say to the stock exchange, "Excuse me, um, 
this 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 holding company, right? This listed company, they they're not um, reporting this stuff like they should be. And um, to be fair, I, I don't think it's that it's, it's going to be anything more than the stock exchange going to Boeing Sports Home and say, look, it's obvious this is in the press. It's obvious that it's inside information. Can you put an announcement out, either one saying it's all bullshit, mm. or two, um, we're doing something, but we can't talk about it right now. You know, we'll get back to you. Or three, yes, we, we're, we're doing this, and this is what's happening. So, so if they say, m- my fear is if that happens, and uh, can you imagine if the um, if the football club, you know, if if Birmingham Sports Holdings um, comes out and says, nah, it's all bullshit. Yeah. So it'd be the great disappointment of 2022. <laughs> See, again, right. So I'm going to tell you a story now. This is nothing to do with football. Story but time with Ivory. The great disappointment of 1844. There was an American preacher called William awesome. Miller, and he um, he was a literalist in the, about the Bible. He read every paragraph of the Bible looking for answers to life, the universe, and everything. And he thought from reading, uh, I believe, the book of Daniel, chapter 8, mm. that he could work out when Jesus was coming back. And so he put all his facts and figures together, and he worked out it was going to be between March the 1st, 1843, and March the 1st, 1844. So 18, March, for, March 2nd, 1844 rolls around. Jesus sent back, and he went, nope, nope. Fucked up my calculations. It's actually April. And again, nothing happened. And then he came out and went, no. And he came out with this massive ream of stuff. And he went, October. October, 18th, <laughs> October the 18th, 1844. Jesus is coming back. Loads of people believed him. Fucking shit tons of people believed him. <laughs> and they started selling their possessions and like getting rid of stuff, getting ready for the rapture. And, and then nothing. the day come and nothing happened. And it was like, everyone's like, well, fuck. And like, all <laughs> the people who didn't believe were like, ha ha. <laughs> Great disappointment, 1844. So, so that's going to be us. Is that what you're saying? Don't sell no, your stuff just no, yet. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this, this is why I don't, be, you know, it's great if someone comes out with all this information, but if you put all your hen- eggs in one basket, mm. shit like that can happen. Now, that actually was the start of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Who okay. kind of came out and said, uh, oh, Jesus didn't come back, but he's not cleaning up down here. He's cleaning up up there, oh, and he'll be back soon. <laughs> and so they believe that we're in what's called end time. Yeah. So like, it's like it's kind of like, um, well, it's not true, but it is true, and we're going to twist it so yeah. it's true. And I believe if it ever came out that it was all bullshit, you will get people to go, no, 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 no. What it we is actually happening. meant was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in short. <sighs> Temper your expectations. It mm. really, really, because until anything comes out to the stock exchange, it's not official. It's not official. And I don't, I really, in my heart, do not want people to have their hearts ripped in two when, you know, because something isn't true. Mm. I, I, I want to be, I, I want this to happen so much. I want them to make the announcement so much. But I'm also I'm I, I, I can't I, I'm not a man of belief. I can't believe blindly. I need evidence. Mm. And until well, I see the evidence. I believe we all know Jesus came back twenty first of April nineteen eighty seven and he went on to start podcasting, didn't he? So um question from Steve Smith at wow. Smithy Ninja eight. <laughs> There's a reason I've got a god complex. Uh could the Hong Kong Stock Exchange stop a sale going through or would it just be a case of BSHL getting punished? Looking forward to the podcast. Keep them coming. And a big Smithy thank you from me. So could, could, could the they... Stock Exchange actually stop anything happening? Um, yes, they could. They, really? Well, technically they could. They, the, any sale will need Stock Exchange approval because it's so big uh, in comparison to the, the company. And also when Paul Swan actually bought it, there were uh, conditions laid down upon him. You need to fulfill these before you can sell it. Now, I think they've all been fulfilled, but... Honestly, it's been a while. I can't remember. Right. So, yes, they can stop it, but I wouldn't worry about that. So, with, with the talks that are, I mean, as I say, Moxley and uh, John Percy have said it, it's all but done. It's all done by the shouting. Um, Paul at Paul Kroll four on Twitter. At what stage does the club need to report negotiations to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange? Can you hold preliminary talks before informing them? Is there a chance that? The talks have happened, and it's kind of yeah, we will. It's like a written, a written. A so, so, so contract. I think we're. I think we're at that point now. It's not the mm. club that needs to report it. It's Birmingham Sports Holdings, and if if 
a buyer has entered a period of exclusivity, he's a preferred bidder, he's uh, undertaking due diligence, we're at that point, it needs to be reported. Nice. Question from me, why wouldn't they inform the stock exchange? What's the what's the issue? What's the hold-up? Isn't it a simple procedure? Inept. It could be ineptitude. Right. Possibly. It could be that they want to drag it out as they want to get the agreement as close to a done before they have to tell anyone. Why though? What case, difference it make? I don't know. Um, mm. You see, this is why I've, I um, not. I don't think Moxley really, or, or even Percy. I don't think they've really dropped a bollock. But you, like mm. the Richards and stuff. So Wednesday, I had a call, um, and I'm going to be. Like, I, I'm fuck it. I had a call from Paul Richards on Wednesday, and he gave me all his facts and figures about his bid, mm. and he said, "Yeah, you can publish it. It's all on the record. Just don't say it's from me." Okay. So I sit you just there have. And I, write, <laughs> I just sit there and I write it and I'm like, this, mate, mate, this is too granular. You can't say this. And yeah. I never do this. But um, I, I text him. I was like, Paul, um, this is a draft on what I'm going to release. Can mm. you tell me if this is OK? And he came back to me. Went, yeah, it's cool. And I'm like, oh, well, I've right. tried. So was that a pro- was, you know, the, there was so much detail in that. That could have been a breach as well. And, you know, Paul Richardson then, oh, you know, I, I really have a problem with how public that, that, that um, bid is. You know, I have, there's people going, um, there are people who are openly saying, oh, yeah, I spoke to Paul Richardson. He's told me this, he's told me that, he's told me the other. It's all going to be grand, blah, blah, blah. It's like, really? Do you, I, do you know? I was always un- under the understanding the more someone shouts about it, the less likely it is to go ahead. Wasn't that that Derby one? Post, yeah, posting fake well, photos of a mansion he didn't own. Eric Alonso, yeah. yeah, yeah. And look at Chris Kirchner has been quite open and been quite talkative. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think mm. Mike Ash is going to buy Derby, you know? It wouldn't surprise me. The, I was going to ask you about the Mike Ash thing. The Mike Ash thing sort of came out of nowhere. And, and I... Right, I'm going to talk about me for a bit, my favourite subject. I get told stuff all the time about blues um, by mm-hmm. various people. You will never and have never seen me break any news on Twitter. In fact, tell a lie, the first thing I ever broke was earlier today when I quoted Matija Sarcic from something he said to me at the awards. That's the only time I've ever broke news. Because although everyone tells me stuff and they tell me with such conviction, they're so sure it's true. And I think, yeah, but someone else just told me something they were sure was true, which completely contradicts it. So it's not that I don't believe people. I just, like you say, until he's holding a scarf in the Tilton, I take it with a pinch of salt. I, I love getting all these bits of snippets of information. It keeps my day ticking over. But... Do, you rem- do you remember what I said in the last podcast about the shattered mirror? Truth yes. being a shattered mirror. It's yes. that. That's yes. what it is. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and, and what this Mike Ashley thing came out. I had DMs telling me it's Ashley. Trust me, it's Ashley. Oh, oh no. My mate Tom. My mate said. It's always my mate. You never actually hear from the mate. Um, now, I, I worked for Mike Ashley temporarily. Well, you worked you were as a shop assistant, sports director. <laughs> Not quite that. I was I was middle management under Ashley. Um, and I put this on Twitter and the Watts Knights will forgive me for repeating it. Every year, Mike Ashley does a, almost like their Christmas party, like a conference. And it was at St. James's Park when he had Newcastle. And you'd go up, you'd get off the coach, you'd all be ferried up there. And you'd walk out into St. James's Park and it is beautiful. It's an amazing ground, especially when it's empty and it just echoes. It's awesome. You walk in and then you go, First, you have a meet and greet. So we met uh, Ian Wright and Stuart Pearce, had photos, blah, blah, blah. Then you go room by room by room. You've got people from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, etc. All doing talks, proper head honchos of these companies. There's then a football tournament. There's then, a, which we won, I got a trophy. Um, overlooked by Neil Ruddock. Um, Were you in goal? No, I was right back. Um, I, I picked right back because I thought... That's an easy position. And I jogged out the tunnel and I was knackered by the time I got to that spot. I thought, I've made a mistake here. Uh, but we won that anyway. Um, I wasn't quite as fat back then. Now, goal. Um, anyway, then there's a dinner and a dance and there's a comedian, blah, blah, blah. The point is, that is a very grand thing. Mike Ashley is a very grand man. He likes to show off his wealth. He arrives everywhere by helicopter. He once did um, show the media around the warehouse and you have to empty your pockets when you go through. He pulled out wads and wads of £50 notes. That man lives for his status symbols. Can you imagine any of that happening at St. Andrews? No. 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 <laughs> uh, the corporate side of St. Andrews is brilliant. It's beautiful. I've had the joy of experiencing it. It's lovely. 
that does not happen at St Andrews. Mike Ashley buys, in my opinion, and this is all my opinion based on no evidence, he buys a derby that's already got the ground there. It's already got the fan base, the infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. When he bought Newcastle, there were 52,000 guaranteed fans every week there. How many do we get at Blues at the moment? I know this, the ground's closed, but I don't think we'd fill those seats anyway. No, I don't think we do. Long story short, Ashley, for me, has come out of absolutely nowhere. And if there was one that I was going to stake my claim and say he won't buy it, and this will come back to bite me in the arse when he buys us next week, I don't think it'll be Ashley. I don't believe it would be Mike Ashley either. Um, Moxley said it's not Ashley. Moxley said he doesn't know who it is. Um, I thought he sat opposite him and said, I've got full No, faith. no, no. So um, he, he met representatives. I believe he met Keith Harris and David Bick. Okay. I believe. Um, interestingly, there's a third name. There was a third person at St. Andrews, which no one's picked up on. Go on. Um, when uh, Harris and Bick was there. Frank McParland. Oh, I saw that mentioned earlier by Kane Styles, I think. I don't know yeah. where, where we go. So with, Frank yeah. McParland's been like a, a director of football at various places. Um, he's an interesting one. Because okay. um, didn't I see Rob Plaster tweet a Rafa Benitez gig, uh, um, uh, gif? Possibly. And McFarland and Benitez are like Pally. Mm. But I would think we'd be more likely to get uh, Warburton. Mm. Um, you know, so uh, I, I mean, I, I, I'm spitballing here. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I do not know who this mystery bidder is. Furthermore, I do not want to know. Um, I know that, that there's some mad rumour going around that I was in the same meeting as um, Neil Moxley. Okay. So I, uh, no, I was in Cherry Reds having a pint with an ex Blues, uh, <laughs> uh, with an ex Blues staff member, and well, then I went out for my mum's birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Mrs. Aubrey. Yeah, I, I was no, I was nowhere near like um, either a meeting or St Andrews. It's mental the stuff from getting to it. Um, well, getting... half these questions are mental rumours. Um, just Go on, so, we'll, we'll clear... let, let's do some mental rumours. This is my favourite one. Uh, and it's not from the person asking the question. He said he's heard it. It's a rumour. Uh, Gil Harry, at Gil Harry 2 on Twitter. Is it true Ian Dutton, Don Gren and Tim Andrews are part of the Lopez <laughs> Richardson Consortium? That's the rumour. Uh, no comment. Can we squash that one now? No comment. I know Dutton loves the club and I'm sure he'd love to buy it. I know Tim Andrews loves, loves the club and would love to buy it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to comment on that one no. um, because I only get myself into trouble. So no, no comment. So you heard it here first. Dan Ivory confirms that it's Ian Dustin, Don Green, and Tim Andrew. <laughs> uh, the other one, uh, Chandon Patel at underscore Chandon Patel. What do you guys think of the John Cordwell rumor? Have you heard that one? Oh, it's the phones for you guy. Yeah, he is, don't yeah. know. Don't know. Um, don't. Uh, yeah, um, I don't really go in for all this uh, rumor stuff. You know, it could be Elon Musk. And oh, if it is Elon Musk, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have words with him for upsetting uh, ups- for upsetting my woman. Really? So, well, um, oh, um, oh yeah. You, what's her name? What's her name? Yeah. What's her name? Knives, something like that. Grimes. I knew it was a one-word name. Yeah. Has he divorced her oh. then, has he? Does he split up with her? They, they were never married, but like, they're split up. Really? He didn't yeah. want her getting her hands on that Twitter money, that's why. He starts I think he's. I that. think he's buying Twitter because he's broke up with her. That's the rumor. <laughs> just so he can just slander her all over Twitter. <laughs> um, I don't think it's like kind of slander. I think it's more he's just butt hurt. Yeah, I don't know. Well, but yeah, there's all these kind of like mad rumors, isn't there? Like you know, uh, John Caldwell. Uh, um, who else? Was it? Uh, I, 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 yeah. Um, there's another one uh, who's come out. I wrote it down. Um, Donald Donald Muir. Music. Right, so that's an interesting one. Mm. That was James Nursey, wasn't it? James yeah. Nursey wrote a piece about um, <laughs> Blue signing Diego Costa, um, which is just fucking brilliant. It'd be typical Blues to sign a plastic yeah, yeah, yeah. Costa, King shit house. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't. I think it's completely bollocks. But he also revealed that uh, the um, Moxie bidder was Don Muir. I can't tell you how I know this, mm. but I am ninety nine percent sure it isn't. Okay. Can you tell us why, if you can't tell us how you know it? Um, not really. I, I'll tell you where I think Nursey got it from, and oh. that's Paul Richardson. I think, basically, because right. Paul Richardson was saying the other bit was Bassini, which it isn't. Right. And I think it, I think it's desperation now. I think it's honest, because it's not going to happen for Richardson. It is not going to happen. He reckons he's negotiating directly with uh, Paul Swem in Hong Kong by Sammy Yu. Sammy Yu's actually not very well. He's in the hospital. Okay. Um, now, I love Sammy Yu as a guy to go drink with. He's mm. he's funny. 
Um, he told me how he was nicknamed George Best when he played football. I went, oh, pull the other one. He was like, no, because my hair, <laughs> which was actually quite funny. Um, but, yeah, he's a great bloke, but I wouldn't trust him with a, the date if he was holding the calendar. But, you know, the guy's <laughs> full of shit. He's a known, like, he scammed. Um, was it Doug Ellis at, at the, um, the Villa shirts mm. over in uh, China? Wasn't there a story about that? Yeah, and that's that, That's basically it. And I think there's, there's people are trying, uh, like Richardson's trying to get all this like grassroots stuff going. And like, I think promises have been made to people about, you know, seats at the table, snakes mm. in the trough maybe. I wouldn't, you know, it's all bollocks. It's all bollocks. With, with the Richardson thing, as I say, I know nothing. No one tells me anything. Well, people tell me stuff all the time. Um, I've heard mm. some mental stuff. I've heard some stuff that could be true. I I know what people tell me, but I don't actually mm. know anything because I've never spoke to these people and I don't know how to run a football club. Um, but what I have seen from the Richardson screenshots are people are asking him, are you buying the club? His response isn't yes. It is and it isn't. The, the sc- I, I could be wrong. The screenshots I've seen are like, we're going to try... Or let's get our club back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that, that, that's like saying, I'm going to try and date Natalie Portman next Yeah, week. exactly, yeah, Let, yeah. Let's get Dan yeah. Laid. Yeah, I'll start that. We'll, we'll start a Kickstarter no, no, for that. I'm, good. I, I'm really, really good. For, I'm really, really good. I don't need that. <laughs> but, you know, no, no offence to Natalie Portman. Gorgeous, but, <laughs> she's yeah, going to be... Fine. My phone's going mad now. She's ringing me. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I have no idea who's buying the club, but... The, as I say, I've always thought the more they shout, the less they, they want to. But the question's got to be, if he's not, I mean, you sound pretty convinced he, that he's not. Uh, and I'm sure if it's someone was willing to come on next week, they could come on and, and tell me the complete opposite. Um, although no one's come forward to, to do a podcast with me because, I don't know. Um, no one likes you, that's why. That's, I didn't want to say Sorry. it, but you've said it for me. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Cheers. Um <laughs> <laughs> Mate, yeah. mate, you're probably more light than I am considering the uh, DMs I've had in the last week. We'll, uh, we will come on to that, don't worry. We've, we've got a, a section on let's give Almajira a kick in, in here. Um, Excellent. Why would he be so reply, replying to people and so adamant about he's going to buy the club? Is that to drum up interest and finance? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a bit of ego. Mm. Maybe, like... Um, yeah, I mean... It's the sort of thing people do when, like, it's not happening and they kind of want to make it happen. They want to force it. They want people to get behind them. They want people to be cheerleaders. I think that's why he called me. Mm. Um, the problem is, is for him, with me, is that I'm very much agnostic when it comes to who's bidding for the club. I, I don't, you know, I don't want to support anyone uh, in particular. Yes, mm. I want the club to be taken over, but I'm not going to work for anyone. I'm not going to support anyone because... That, that's just a ticket to misery, if you ask me. Um, me, personally, I, I think it's the other end of the coin anyway. It's it's because we're at the whim. Mm. Uh, sorry, at the uh, at the mercy of um, the competence of Birmingham Sports Holdings. That's where the problem is. It's not with the buyers. It's, I can think of, I've heard maybe six or seven groups that have like either really? expressed an interest. Yeah. Who have, I mean, some of it's like tentative. Some of it's like, yeah, maybe. Mm. Some of it's like, yeah, we want it. Yeah, there's, there's plenty. Of, like, if, if these two don't happen, I am 100% certain Keith Harris could find someone else and progress it. So there's no need to panic. Would that someone else be Ian Dutton, Don Gren, Craig Gardner's no, cat? No, well, the, the, the only thing I would say about those three is Dong is currently selling pet stuff in Spain the yeah. last time I heard. Or at least his missus is. So if you, if you if you want um, like a nice little designer outfits for your dog, Harley Dong, Dong's no <laughs> Dong's your man. Got oh, I know, Dong's but we'll way. send we'll send Harley over there. A bit of business for him. Um, so, hang on, I'm reading the wrong one. Do yeah, do you have any idea? So who who do you think the Moxley um, bidder is? Do you have any idea, or are you? Could you even say? I don't know, and I don't want to know no. until it's public, because that way I can't get in trouble. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how sure are you that Richardson and Maxi Lopez aren't going to be buying this club? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not very sure, 10 being very sure. Yeah. 12. You're that certain he's not buying the club? Yes. Where does Maxi Lopez live, do you know? 
Apparently, he's bought a house in Henry and Arden. I was going to say, it's a long way to come for someone who's not buying a, buying the club. Well, his mate, Christian Kadoma, lives in Barking or something. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Yeah. Um, As far away from Mario Riccardi as possible, I guess. <laughs> Google that one, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Like, as I say, I, I'm at the mercy of what people tell me. And, and the, the thing, thing with you, Dan, is... I don't know if you're right. I've no idea. I, I get you happy to get you on here to talk to you about it, um, and you are very convincing in what you say. But I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure who's right. But I tell you, the difference between you and the others is I can show you where your evidence is because you put your evidence out there. Um, I try to, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm a very much an evidence-based person, and wherever I can share information, I will because I think it's best that everyone gets to see it. Mm. You know. Um, I don't. I don't go in for. Uh, there's there's some clicky secrecy bollocks out there. Mm. Don't go for that shit. If I can show you, I will. And if I can't, there'll be a good reason why I can't. Mm. Well, you you've, you took a bit of a kick in on social media the last last. Day. I mean, there is still loads and loads of build the statue comments. Um, yeah. Okay. Can, can I address that? Of I don't course you can. Wait. I don't want a statue. I don't want to be a fan's re- uh, representative. I don't want any of that bullshit. Okay, I do. I want the statue. Yeah, I, want, give, I want the give, attention. Give me the ginger sex god. <laughs> it'd be less. It'd be, it'd be less bronze anyway. He, he's, 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 he's not as fat as I am, and he's not as tall as I am. <laughs> okay, so no, no Dan statue, statue me. Right. Okay. Uh, back, back to the criticism. How? I mean, how? Right. You. Don't get paid for this. No. You... No, my, my website it... runs off... Uh, I got a little bit of ad revenue from Google, mm. a few sponsorships, a few people chipping a bit of money here and there. That's it. The majority... I, I have a full-time job that pays mm. my way, you know, pays wages. Mm. If I was living on what I earned from my website, I would be on the streets begging, mate. Mm. See, so when you get journalists and footballers and stuff, and, and not that anyone should get a sort of hate campaign levied at them, um, but there is a sense of perhaps they're not controlling their own social media. Um, mm. Perhaps it comes with a territory, which is a terrible excuse, but that's maybe valid. I don't know. Um, but you've had a lot of hate directly at you. Yeah, it's, you it's, not just, something I'm not, it's not something I'm not used to. You just damn from I, I, I grew I grew up on the mean streets of Small East Alliance, um, yeah. uh, dot com, which has been a bear pit in the past, and I've taken some shit. Rightly so, in many cases, I've taken some shit over the years. So, how it, it how, most... how does someone who is admittedly introverted as yourself cope with a barrage of abuse? Turn off notifications. Turn off my phone. Go do something else. Go to the pub. Yeah. Yeah. How, how else can you deal with it? You just. I don't. My. Um, if I don't reply to you on Twitter, I'm sorry, but I've got my all my Twitter notifications turned off. Mm. Um, I don't see them. Uh, I only see them if I go looking for them, and I only go looking for them when I am actually in a good place to answer stuff. Really? If I don't respond, it's because I can't or because I haven't seen it, and I'm sorry. But I've got, you know, I, I can't do it. I, I, I don't. I do not live on social media. Well, maybe TikTok these days. Oh, I hate uh, TikTok. Oh, mate, you, you're watching the wrong people. Is oh, all I can no, say. I, I haven't even got it downloaded. I, I, I hate. You the are, platform. you are missing out, mate. Oh, you oof. are. Big time missing out. People send me TikToks all the time, and I could look watch them, and I kind of go, "Huh." But I think if you've you sent ro- me that, the, I think you you, you thought that was hilarious. If that's the best that TikToks got to offer, plus anything good on there ends up on Twitter anyway. So, oh, I, I, I don't go for I, I don't go for hilarious TikToks. You're you're in the wrong oh, genre really? there, mate. Well, yeah. the wrong people are sending me stuff. I need better friends, perhaps. Um, yeah, probably. With, with social media, we've had a, a couple of questions about your your social media presence. Uh, this Go one, for it. this one's just from anonymous. I'll read them both and let you answer them. Yeah. Uh, anonymous. Recently, Dan has had a lot of flack on social media. Does he feel like some of this is justified because he's quite difficult to interact with? And then blue balls at blue balls nineteen seventy four underscore. Are you arrogant slash aloof or just socially awkward? Genuine question, not a piss take. I can never quite figure how to take you on Twitter. Okay, so I'm going to answer the second one first. Go for it. Both. Both. I can be arrogant, yes. I am definitely aloof because I am. I prefer to be on my own. I'm not, I'm not a gregarious person. I am an introvert. I am very socially awkward. Very, I, like, 
anyone who knows me well will tell you that I'm not very great. I'm not very good in crowds. Um, you know, I'm on anxiety medication, have been for a long time, because um, I had a, a burnout incident last year where I literally had a breakdown. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's... I, I, I get... The thing with social media and the written word in general is it's hard sometimes to read time. Yeah, definitely. And there are times when I'm, you, I'm human. I get pissed off too. Mm. And sometimes I just think, oh, fuck you. Like, like there was someone the other day and I won't name names, but they'll know who I'm talking about. Mm. Cause I've, I've had discussions with them in the past and they're like, they, they, they quoted some, they quoted me as something that was like not right. And I was like, no, that's not what I said. This is what I said. Read what I wrote, not what you, not what you thought I wrote. Mm. And of course they, they took the hump from that. And, you know, they're like, oh, it respects a two-way street. Well, yeah, so it's not being a wet wipe. <laughs> you know. Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, some people do wind me up. I, I, I will admit it. Some people wind me up. And this is why I don't have notifications on. And, yeah, I am arrogant. And <laughs> sometimes I'm arrogant because I know I'm right and the other person's wrong. I can't help that, and you know that that's 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 a you problem, not a me problem, where I'm concerned, um, which is an arrogant thing to say. Um, is some of it justified? Probably. It's not a popularity contest. I know that there are people out there who don't like what I do. I know there are people out there who think um, what I do is like pessimistic or doom mongering. Who think the four letters HKSC are the worst invention known to man, and they're all entitled to those beliefs, and they're probably right in most cases. But hey ho. I don't like everyone either. Do you think there's um, you would be better served not replying to these people at all? Yes, and that's why I try not to. Mm. Um, but people get mad about that as well. Some people think they own you. Some people mm. think that um, they must have a reply. Like one guy was going mad because I wasn't replying to him. It's like, but but why should I? Mm. You know. I mean, I remember people, um, this is going back a bit, when I lived in Poland, people were messaging me, and it was like, dude, it's 10 o'clock on a Saturday night, I'm in the fucking pub, mm. leave me alone, yeah. you know, go and have a pint, you'll live longer, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think my attitude to social media is slightly different to yours, but, I mean, back, back since day one, I've always tried to reply to everyone uh, in good faith as well, because I think if you're taking time out of your day to send some short fat ginger more on with a microphone a message you deserve some acknowledgement even if it's just a like so I, I do try however recently um particularly doing these podcasts with you like when i asked for those questions earlier <laughs> it, it's impossible to reply i will honestly try and get around to replying to you all but i mean if that's just a fraction of the notifications you're getting um i've never known anything like it just by saying has anyone got any questions Dan? and most of them were shit jokes which i will read out later don't worry i, I love the shit jokes someone came out with one of my favorite simpsons um, yeah i've quotes. written that down yeah <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll i'll ask that later um but yeah i see if i'm honest with you i see where people that like, could be coming from with the arrogance thing um when yeah. i and and i've i think i've said this to you before anyway um you you certainly when we first uh interacted you had a bit of a pr issue maybe on on twitter but i'd also say that i i think i, I may be way off base but i think you're aware of it and i think you've made a conscious effort to change that that's how it appears to me anyway um, i have and i think I have, people but, perhaps um... have got these pre um they've they've, they've prejudged you perhaps or Maybe, not, not maybe. It's, that's quite natural. Mm. Um, the one thing I'd say to everyone, like to the people who don't like me and all that, hope this takeover goes through and it's all sorted because once it's done, I'm, You're off. I'm, that's it, I'm, I'm off. <laughs> Are you really? Is that you? Yep, yep, that that's you? me done. Yeah. I, I was going to do it after a TTA took over and unfortunately I couldn't, but yeah, at this time, once it's all gone through, you're on your own. What I'm ha- done. What happens if these owners are even worse? God you're on your own. Why is that? I'm, Too much stress and hassle or... No, I'm just I'm tired of it now. I mean, I, I've been doing it for more than, more than eleven years, Bloody and um, there are people. I, I think I can't say this in a in a nice way. I don't think I think there are some people out there who think maybe they can do a better job, and I think yeah. it's time to give them the opportunity to do that. To do so, yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, that's fine. Like, all this goes through. See you later. Thank you. You know, th- thanks for all the nice words. And uh, I'm going to go and enjoy um, other things. So how does Dan Ivory feel that time after? I'll be... Uh, I'll, music i go to like tons of gigs yeah that's why i, I don't i don't have a tv i listen to stuff all the time mm. fat lads going gold podcast just lie to me dan just say yes for my own ego Mate. just say yes yes obviously fat lads going gold podcast well, obviously you shouldn't have obviously. you didn't have to say that dan Doug. you shouldn't have um question from dave sherlock at dave sherlock uh just bought haircuts and league cups from amazon when all this is said and done will there be a second book uh, yes, also Andy there is. Willits, at Andy Willits, when's the next book? Right, so so this this is actually a bit of a sore point because it should have come out a while ago. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, I I started writing it uh, four or five years ago. And am I, am I, I in I, it? No, well, you might be now. Get in. You might be now. And, and I really should have finished it. And the, the problem is, is that things keep getting in the fucking way. The club keeps falling apart. And, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and my health, my health was not great for mm. quite a while. And like, it's like, even now, even now I can't do as much as I used to because I just do not have the energy. Really? I just don't. So that's, I mean, that, and that's part of it again for like, once this all goes through that, you know, I, I can, I can finish that. I can sit and spend my time doing it and doing it properly and put it out there and be like, you know, that, that'll be the magnum opus. That'll be it. And I'll be like, thank you, guys. I'm out. Off into the sunset. Yeah. Or something like that, yeah. For anyone who, who wants uh, Dan's first book, it's still on Amazon, isn't it? Is, yeah, or, is you, it... or you can go to haircutsandleadcups.co.uk. Um, I've still got a couple of copies here I can send out, so I'll sign them as well. I was going to say, sign them and everything, yeah. Yeah, I'll sign them. So, yeah, if, you know, if you want one, or just drop me a DM on Twitter or, or, or an email and I'll mm. sort you. Well, that's some of the, the serious stuff and maybe perhaps depressing stuff out of the way. Getting on to the real questions, Nick at Greek Blue Nose, is a Jaffa cake a cake or a biscuit? Now, I'm disappointed a lawyer's asked me this because it wasn't a legal case about this. Was there really? Yeah, because, right, so do you know why? Go on. So one thing has a uh, has VAT charges on it, and the other doesn't. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the Jaff cake is a cake, and therefore a zero rated food stuff. And the reason it's a cake, I remembered mm. this: cakes go hard when they're stale. Biscuits go soft. Really? Yes. Well, there you go. Come for the stock exchange. Stay for the biscuit talk. There you go, Nick. There's an answer to your question. <laughs> um, what else? Should we do another? S- Stupid one. I'm sure there is more. Oh, this one. Actually, it's a brilliant question. Um, Football Twitter, I have a love-hate relationship with it. Some of them are horrible and misogynistic and borderline racist and stuff. Some of them are absolutely fucking hilarious and I love them to bits and I'll give them all a big cuddle. There's a section of Football Twitter I love. This guy is one of my favourites. Sean, at underscore Sean 7 underscore. Are the mascots married or related? Always eluding me. Bell and Bow. What's what's or what's both. the score? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not from the black country. Um, oh, should I have said that? I don't ah, know. go um, for it. <laughs> that's a really good question. I think I think we should, I think we need to know. I always assume siblings. I always assumed they were married. The other thing is, Bo looks a lot older than Belle, so well, maybe yeah. maybe it's father daughter. Or, or maybe you know he's, he's you know he, he's just got a thing for young chicks. You know maybe maybe he's, he's just a sugar you know, daddy. All those years yeah. down the club, he's been saving his pennies and... Yeah, it's a sugar daddy, you know. Sugar, yeah. da- sugar daddy bow. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You heard it here first. New mascot for when we get taken over by a billionaire. Sugar daddy bow. Love it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talking of billionaires taking over the club, which I'm sure they're going to. Uh, Toby, at Toby C 1875 can you see the stands being repaired before the start of next season? Will they come in and just no. chuck a load of money at it and get it sorted? I don't think money's the problem. I think time is. I don't think there's enough time to do it. Um, I'm really disappointed that uh, they haven't started work on it. And it's starting to look now that they're not going to start work until stuff's done. Um, I actually meant to mention this earlier. One thing I don't think people realise, everything's on pause at the club at the moment. Mm. So no one knows what the budgets are for next season for like the academy or for transfer budgets. Lee Bo, you don't know if he's got a job or not. Oh, we don't no, know what's happening with stands. Season tickets aren't on sale. We're in limbo. 
that's another reason that BSH needs to get off the fucking uh, off their arses and sort something out to at least start the ball rolling so we can get out this limbo because I'm sure that while things are progressing, you know, th- th- there are mechanisms in place where they can say, well, we've spent this much money, so you need to put this much money extra on top of the bid to um, to recompense us for this, you know? Mm. There do, has to be. Do you know if that meeting that Boya was supposed to have actually took place? I have no idea. No. I, you'd have thought we'd have heard something by now, but there's just been no... Well, no. It would have been pointless, wouldn't it? Because highly, well, yeah, um, we, we we don't know what's going on, so we we can't tell you shit. Have a nice have a nice summer. We'll call you when you're sacked. Yeah, it's all a bit a bit strange. Didn't say we've got to pay seven hundred and fifty k to get rid of him as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's the maximum. I mean, that obviously they could come to some sort of mutual agreement, but mm. who's paying it? Good like the club will Who pay. Knows? The Who club knows? will pay, obviously. But who's going to put the money into the club to pay it? Who's going to like say, well, "I didn't want to give him four hundred grand. I wanted to give him like fifty p in a Twix." <laughs> so, Dan the Doom Monger Ivory. If this is going to be three months worth of takeover, no, I don't. I, I think what will happen is is because it makes no sense to have three months of like nothing progressing nice. there'll be some sort of this is part of why it's a there's horse trading because part of it will be we're going to pay this much for it but obviously the club's going to need to run for the next few months so you can spend up to this amount and we will give it back to you like um so you can spend this much on doing this this and this and we will refund you that when we buy the club right or you know something like that i would think you know because otherwise we're going to be sat there going... Yeah, and, essentially, yeah. And that that's just stupid. There's going to have to be some something done. So I'm not worried about... I, I, until an actual like firm cast iron agreement's in place, I don't think they can do that. Can they... That, can they put any money, in, like almost invest in the club themselves? I don't think so. No. Uh, do you remember when Carson <laughs> Young uh, bought Birmingham City, uh, yeah. bought, bought us, and he wanted to put some money in because mm. it was just at the end of the transfer window and he wanted <laughs> to buy a player? Yeah. And the, <laughs> the league went, no, um, you can't do that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's possible. Oh, well, it, it, might be, it might be possible, but it would be something that would probably wouldn't be spoken out loud. It would probably be some, like, quiet agreement. Again, it, it's one of those things where I, I'm. it's not something I'm actually worried about because mm. when the agreement's in place, that should all be sorted. All I want is them to get that agreement in place. I just want to get the, 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 the process rolling. That's it. Mm. You know? And I don't care. You know, all I want is someone who's going to come in, who's going to run the club competently, and give us, you know, make us happy again. That's you know, I don't, nice. I don't care about passion. I don't care about us spending like fifty million on players or buying Diego Costa or whoever else. Mm. All I care about is someone comes in, and the stands get fixed, and the ground gets looked after, and we don't have all those tiny little gripes that really piss us off when we go to the games. You know, it's it's what, we can see football? that. Well, yeah, there there is that, but. You know, when you go and it's just like you can see that there's neglect and mm. state like you can see the weeds growing up through the main stand and mm. shit like that. You know, just someone who's gonna come in and just run it properly. Well if you look at what Dutton has done so far, the baby steps, you just think yeah. give him a budget and who knows what could happen. He's he's doing well with his hands tied financially. Yeah. Um and you you can't knock him for what he's done so far. But imagine yeah. if he had a budget. The only thing I would say to Ian Dutton is probably advice I should follow myself. Get off Twitter. Mate, turn Twitter off. Don't I try and respond to everyone else. I said that to him at the awards. Like, you're doing a fantastic... Doing a stand-up job, Ian. Yeah. You don't have to be everything to everyone, mate. Mm. There are going to be people who are going to hound you for the stupidest shit. Just just get on with you. Like, your actions are showing that you're, that you're doing something. Just keep doing that, mate. Yeah. Yeah, he... Um... He, he did say it's not going to be a long-term thing. Like, I think once the stability, I'm guessing he's going to try and step back from Twitter. Uh, but it'll it'll kill him if he stays on it. He needs to to back well, yeah, away. It'll burn you out. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely, without a doubt. Um, so with, with the sale of the club, how do you, obviously our, our Birmingham City has been split into a million different parts, hasn't it? Um, how do you put that club back together in order to buy it? Does so, that make sense? right, 
this is the thing. Birmingham Sports Holdings has been split into a million different parts because it's a public listed company. Yeah. Birmingham City has been split into two. Right, so well, it's not so, it's not two, as convoluted big as... Bits. No, no, no. So there's two big bits and then like a load of little bits you don't need to worry about. So you got 75% that's owned by Birmingham Sports Holdings. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, 21.64% that's owned by Oriental Rainbow Investments. Mm. And just some tiddly bits owned by the public. And I think Paulsman owns like about a quarter of a percent. Right, okay. But those tiddly bits, you don't have to worry about them because if you own 95%, you can force them to sell anyway. So that's not an issue. Right. So all it is, and this, the only thing I really liked about the Paul Richardson, the only thing I liked about the Paul Richardson's bid was the idea that he was going to buy out um, this small stake first. And then, because that small stake wouldn't require anything more than one announcement to the stock exchange. So it's a real, don't own it. real sign of yeah. intent. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is, is that you buy it and then what? Because, you know, I want to put someone on the board, BSH going, no, fuck you. Hmm. I want to do this. No, fuck you. And the fact that there was supposed, supposed to be borrowed money and, um, yeah, um, also, uh, there's the spectrum of Matt Southall over this now. Matt Southall is no longer involved. Well, he he's not involved in this. I heard he was, but he's not anymore, or he's not. Um, but the, when he bought um, Charlton Athletic uh, with East Street Investments, ESI, mm. it was very eerily a two-step process where they bought a stake Tried to bought the stadium and then bought the big bit. Except they didn't buy the stadium because they didn't have the money, and they didn't complete the deal because they didn't have the money. And in the meantime, Matt Southall was chairman and rinsed Charlton dry yeah. by buying, uh, leasing was it seven flash cars, a hip pad in London, all that sort of stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So, all our eggs are in the Moxley anonymous bidders. Well, basket if he's the exclusive bidder then yeah by, yeah by by definition all our eggs are in currently in that basket however i will reassure people this is not doom mongery this <laughs> is actually positive i do do positive <laughs> that if that didn't go through there will be other people who would step into the breach and give it a go and i'm sure that keith harris could like fairly quickly push that through it wouldn't be like a restart negotiations they'd be like look we got to this point is mm. this fine? Yeah, okay, then. Pick the ball up and run. So what does Keith yeah. Harris get out of this? Finder's fee. Right. And that's, I'm guessing, substantial. Yeah. It's going to be a percentage of the sale price, I would think. So he gets hired by BSHL and they say... So so according to John Percy, um, he has been appointed by... Well, according to Moxley, Moxley said the club. Mm. Percy said Birmingham Sports Holdings. I'm not entirely sure who was appointed him, but it seems to have come from the club side. So they have appointed him to find the buyer. And if he gets the deal done, then he gets a finder's fee. Which... Couldn't they have saved all this money just by letting Craig Gardner do it? <sighs> <laughs> do you remember the amount of times Craig Gardner struggled to find a blue shirt on the pitch? <laughs> what makes you think he's going to find a fucking buyer? <laughs> <laughs> Question Sorry, from Josh Craig. Clark, J Clark seven two four. Has Dan had much contact with Craig Gardner since the last podcast? And is there a danger Craig could have just brokered himself out of a job? Um. So, I had one call, um, which I didn't answer. Right. Okay. Uh, the day after my piece, and I've not heard a thing since. I understand from speaking to people, Craig Gardner is not in the Almaty fan club you, at all. Odd that. <laughs> I like him, so I hope he likes me. This is all Dan talking. I like you, Craig. <laughs> um, it's not I don't like him. It's not. A, it's not. A, no, it's not. I don't like him. It's just that I personally can deal without um, having him phone me three times a day. Right. To say what? And I can't. I can't say any further because I'd be breaching the confidence then. But um, let's just say, in the period that he did call me, he called me a lot and. It gets tiring. I'm not. I'm not that person. I'm not the person. I'm not a person who spends an hour on the phone to uh, someone every day. Are you okay, hon? Mm. I'm not. I. I am aloof and arrogant. And <laughs> I don't do that shit. Okay. So, do you think Craig Gardner's um, supposed um, helping sell the club is that linked? Do you think to the Moxley? Yeah. Buyer? Yeah. So apparently, so that had links. Mo 
Apparently so. Apparently the, he has been instrumental in bringing Keith Harris on board. And if that is the case, then hands up. You know, he deserves credit for it. And I, I, I will say that, um, you know, if it goes through and if he, it was him who brought Harris on board, um, fair fucks. Um, if Frank Parlin's involved and wants the director of football job, fuck knows what Gardner's going to well, do. Well, that's the thing. He might have just, yeah, put a nail in I, his own coffin, you know, I, really. I genuinely hope that's not the case. I hope it's not the case. That's a bit, that, that's a bit shit. I love the Gardeners. And I wouldn't say I love the Gardeners. I do. I, do. I mean, love with the Gardeners. Mm. It's deep. I've never met the Gardeners, but they're, they're lovely. Did you not meet them last night? Uh, on, um, so, um, no. Thing? There was the... Um, Did they not return your calls? Well, were, they, were they busy washing their hair? There's, I think you get to the point where when you're stood outside their window in the rain with a boombox over your head and they still don't open the window to speak to you, probably they're not interested. What song would you be playing? Um, Endless Love, obviously. Nice. Gotta be. Um, no, th- at, the, at the awards, there was kind of the, the mature heads that tended like seemed to disappear quite, a, quite, like, quite early. Uh, not quite early. After the awards ceremony, they they drifted away, and then there was the the younger crowd of players that were there all night, <laughs> and the women's team were there all night. <laughs> did you go to Nuvo? I did. I've never been to Nuvo before. I will never go to Nuvo again. Uh, that's not a slight on Nuvo. It's just not my scene at all. Yeah, I, I I've been to a previous awards do where I ended up in Nuvo with the ladies' team, and yeah, they like the music um the, that 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 music fit those players uh, those players had a hell of a what, time what music they, was it it was all r&b they didn't play a single slipknot song what is the point well that's just that's just bang out of order isn't it? what's the point i requested a bit of speed metal and there was just nothing like imagine a whole room full of people mushing to wait and bleed and just there was nothing so i'm, See, I'm I, not I saying it was ha- a flop I, that ceremony but you didn't cater to me i didn't have you down as a but not fun. Yeah, all metal, pop punk, all that sort of stuff, old school punk. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no wonder you get on with bloody um, uh, Matthew and uh, Chris. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We're all rocks. I thought you were at first. I didn't realize you were uh, an electro I, rave kind of guy. Um, I'm kind of an everything kind of guy. I listen to. Uh, I literally listen to everything. You um, look like it should be metal. You're listening to. With a beard like that, it has to be metal. I have been to more metal gigs this year than I've been to for quite a while because my daughter's a metal fan. But what a I'm legend. Not. She's into like, um, uh, not, well, kind of death metal, grindcore, I guess. Mm. Screamo. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I can't do it. It's a bit too heavy for me these days. I'm too old for it. I kind of got to a point when I was about 24, 25, where I just thought, I've listened to enough music now. That'll do. This is my music for the rest of my life. I don't need any of the new stuff. I've got my music now. I'll carry these bands with me. So uh, you see, I, I listen to new stuff all the time. It's almost it. like, almost like a competition sometimes with uh, Matthew, like who can come up with like the newest, most bizarre, obscure shit. Oh, I can't. Frank Turner is as new as I go. Um, other than that, I'll. I'll just bring Alkaline Trio with me wherever I go, sort of thing. Uh, anyway, we've gone massively off track here. Um, let's get us back on track with another important question. Hugely Novak fan, at Lee Novak 7. Does Dan prefer lager or ale? Um, I am very much... Uh, well, the beer should give it away. I'm ale. not a lager man. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I can drink I can drink lager, but not really. Um, I find it I find it a little bit gassy. And, um, yeah. And, and, yeah, like, if I'm drinking something like Carling... Um, I'm not. I'm not buying it. I'm renting it. The Ooh. amount of time spent in my body. You're going to upset football Twitter with that one. Yeah, but but it's the truth. It's it's not. I don't like it. I'm literally renting it for a half an hour <laughs> before it exits me again. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> right back to the important stuff. So Josh Clark at J Clark seven two four. What would Dan's ideal bidder look like, and what sort of background would he have? So you say you know of seven. Uh, obviously, you can't tell us who they are for. Um, NDA reasons. I, it's not for NDA reasons. It it's just that. I, well, I just. Choose, I, I think it'd be better if I didn't because okay. you know, people. People are. Always, there's too much hype out there as it is, and like I say, most of it's just like tentative stuff, like bits and pieces I've heard. I don't know how. I, and it's like this question about asking who the ideal bidder is. I actually couldn't tell you. No. Because, yeah, nationality is not a thing. I don't care. Um, I don't. Be, I don't believe in nationality anyway. Mm. Um, money doesn't really matter, you know. Obviously, enough to do the job, but 
minted. Mm. It can be minted and still be a miser. It's it's all about intention and competence. You know, if you've got a highly competent scouting department who can find you, maybe not like like all but always bargains, but or, or money ball, but you know, just do better with you know have more good ones than bad ones. Mm. Yeah, you, know, you, you can do all right, can't you? Um, all I want is competency, really. Mm. That's it. Competent. You know, <laughs> the bar is so low at St Andrews at the moment it's because true. of the last few years that competency is all I care it about. True. Well, what, what you say about the the mega rich owners? Um, I remember saying to my Villa mates when they got took over by and became one of the richest clubs in the world. You, you are and you aren't. It's all right having that money, but if your owners don't want to put it in, it means nothing, does exactly. it? Exactly. And that's to sell Grealish to get their players this season. It's not that they own. I mean, yes, they they splash the cash to an extent, but it's not Man City level, and it's not going to be in Newcastle next season. Um, even Man, even Man City don't really. They buy like one player a year. One marquee signing, don't they? And, and and you look at Man City. The reason they've done that is because like all their good players stay there for a long time. They've yeah. built the spine of their team, and they don't need to, like. It's competency. Mm. Yes, they splashed a lot of money. I mean, I remember them buying Rubinho and mm. Joe and all that. And the, at first it was shite, but now you look at the the spine of the team, and they've all been there forever. Mm. You know, Edison's been there for ages. cancelo has been there. For, uh, Cancelo's been there for ages. Mm. Uh, Stones has been there for ages. Uh, Lepore's been there for a while. Zinchenko's been there for ages. Mm. Bernardo, Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan. Even Jesus has been there a while now. Yeah, um, they're, they're, they're all. They're all... Yeah, mainstays so sort of thing. This, what they've they've, they've got to a point now where they don't need to rip things up. They've got they've got a manager that plays in a certain way. They've got they bought players to match that kind of style. Mm. But like they, they didn't get the striker they wanted this year, and it's not matters because they don't really play with an the striker. They're that good. They don't need a striker. It's insane. So Harland's an interesting one because mm. like he's so quick. Mm. And he's, he's so instinctive, like he's going to be on. And I, I don't think he'll necessarily play as like a directly through the middle. I think mm. they'll play him from like um, either side, you know, because he can do that. Mm. And, you know, you pair him up with like your other players you've got and you say, well, look, yeah, um, just, you know, do your thing. Mm. I can't just wait do... to see it, to be honest. Can't wait to see yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for. Yeah. I, I know it's wrong to admit it, but I quite, I like quite a lot of watching Man City play. Um, I watched them beat Newcastle 5 0 and. <laughs> there was mm. one point, I think it was the start of the second half, where um, New, uh, Man City had 98.4 possession. Yeah, it's they insane. Had, they, compl- they completed like 300 passes mm. and Newcastle hadn't completed one. Yeah, they're, they're, they're nice to watch. They're an, an yeah. exciting team to watch, um, which I'm sure Blues will be once we get took over by Elon Musk and Dong Ren. Um, question I had. The, the, the Premier, or Premier, however you say it, of the British Virgin Isles, has been arrested for drug offences. Does that affect BSHL in any way? Because they've obviously, so, he, he's obviously a dodgy geezer, and BSHL has got shares over not shares companies over there. I th- I don't know enough to be absolutely mm. um, like certain, but I know that um, the British government has said to the Virg- British Virgin Islands, look. Your um, your your boss is going is going down for uh, drug dealing or drug whatever. Drug trafficking, I think, wasn't it? Something drug trafficking, like yeah. yeah. You guys can't run yourself. We're going to take you back mm. under our wing. And what that might do, I don't know if it will. But what that might do is say, well, you know, it was tax haven bollocks. Mm. Now, in some ways, it is going to affect people because yeah, they've got BVI companies. But all they'll do is they'll just move those companies to like the Marshall Islands, Samoa, mm. Seychelles, you know somewhere else so because obviously they've 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 now decided to sell um the question is why why now is it in your opinion is it the protests is it the trouble in cambodia von peck um um i i i think that it's china really so i posted something i think it was last week about two shopping malls that um king owns uh Mm. wang yao hui owns in uh, Beijing. He, his name's not officially on them, but it what used to be. He's a um, placement of there now. Mm. And um, there was a piece in um, China, which is one of the main news websites in China, saying that Wanda, you know Wanda, who own uh, the Wanda Metropolitano yeah, um, yeah. Stadium, all that, 
they were taking the management over because right. he couldn't sell them. He couldn't get anyone to buy it because they owe so much money. But what amazed me was they went into quite uh, granular detail about um, Wang Yaohui, about like his businesses, about where where he's fucked up and stuff like that. And there was another piece about it yesterday. Mm. And in that piece, they even talked about um, – because, you know, he went on the run because he bribed someone who got sent to prison for it. Mm. They talked about what the actual bribes were. I've never seen that before. No way. So you think they're, they're clamping down on him So personally. what it is, what it is, is in, the press in China are known mugs. They, they know who's, who's, like, who's hot and who's not. Mm. They know who's in trouble. And if someone's in trouble, they pile in, to use a Birmingham mouth phrase. Mm. And I... Th- appears to me and i'm fairly sure of it they're piling in on wang yao Hui, and now might be the time to cut and run maybe so you think um, he goes completely underground after this maybe maybe although his missus is still doing a, a good job spending his money she mm-hmm. was in geneva last week nice. at the gem fair nice yeah it's all right for some well you know so cyprus uh, looking at um hotels and stuff geneva this uh, Geneva last week, mm. and like buying hotels, not not staying in hotels, yeah, yeah, yeah. buying hotels. Um, Geneva, Gem Fair, I believe she's going back to the Med for another holiday in the not too distant future. Yeah. And it's all by private jet. Is there a chance he transfers his <coughs> assets under her name for well, a clean most, slate? I think there are a lot of assets under her name anyway. Mm. Um, all the company stuff in the UK is under her name, not his. Right. And so, yeah. I want you know because she's. I think she's got nine passports as well. You know, the deal. Yeah, I know of at least five. And I wonder sometimes if like uh, it was like if she got it so he could get one. Mm. Maybe I don't know. Um, so do you yeah, think do you think the protesting's done anything? It has. Um, first of all, it was good for people who pro. It was a good thing for the people who protested because it made them feel like they were doing something, and that's cathartic. a good thing in itself. Yeah, yeah, it's cathartic, and it helps people to um, kind of like um, I don't know to express themselves maybe a little bit. I think it it probably it probably brought a bit more attention to the people behind the scenes, which is always a good thing because they don't want attention brought to them. And I know a few things might have pissed them off a little bit, which mm. is all thing as well. You know, I'm all about that sort of thing. So, do you think they would have helped with Gardner bringing in Keith Harris? No, you don't think they would have pushed Gardner into doing no, that? No, I, th- I think I think Gardner knew that. Uh, Gardner probably knew he had to do that. He had to, he felt he had to do something anyway because he knows. The, well, he knows better than anyone else the state of the club's in. Mm. He's the technical director. And I'm sure, you know, if, if he's sitting in meetings going, fuck me, we're broke. Fuck me, this is going wrong. Fuck me, that's going wrong. We need to sell. We need to sell. I need to convince them to sell. And then we play Hull. And Keith Harris, who was not against the Blues, he was against the whole city. Mm. That's the absolute truth. There was no one from Hull City. <coughs> excuse me. There was no one in, from Hull City in the boardroom. So Blues invited him to sit with him. No, right. And when you sat next to someone... You can start a conversation, can't you? And it mm. might just happen that, that Craig started the right conversation at the right time. What a man. Told you. Man of my heart, but, Craig you know, Gardner. That, that's, how thing, that's how things happen. Like, There's no great conspiracy. There's no great like structure. Sometimes it's just random as that. Mm. You know? So we have a question from Graham Hain, Haynes, at Graham Haynes 1. Are the owners looking to sell because of the spiralling costs of running the club on repairs, etc.? I'm guessing that's a, a no. I, I, I can't answer it. I don't know. No, no idea. Uh, Nish, at official underscore Nish. Does Dan have any suspicions on what Mr. King's actual business interests are and how he makes money? Appreciate that answering this may put him in a difficult position. Yeah, I do. Are you allowed to say? I don't wish to say. Yeah. Take from that whatever you will. Um, what else? Uh, JV Crafts at Crafts JV. Uh, Dan said on the previous podcast that he has proof that Von Pick is the front man for Mr. King. Will he be releasing that info if and when the current owners are departed? No, the reason it's sensitive is still the reason it's sensitive. Um, I won't be able to get you killed. Mm, maybe <laughs> wow, please don't kill me. I'm just the platform. <laughs> this is all Dan. <laughs> I like my head on my shoulders. Um, 
Too they big. tend to go for knifing more than that. All right, I'll bear that in mind then. I'll look out for... Machetes and things like that, machetes, you know. Machetes, isn't it? Oh, good. Oh, joy. Um, James Flaherty, which I hope I've pronounced properly. I actually asked him how to pronounce his name. Um, I thought this was an interesting question. Does the takeover have any kind of FFP reset? Villa were in a spot of bother before they avoided before they were taken over, but avoided FFP punishments. Did the takeover help or did they dodge it through promotion? I always understood it was you get promoted, you get off scot Yeah, they, 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 they believe, I believe they dodged it because of promotion. Okay. Um, we're not in a position where we're in trouble at the moment because no. Jude Bellingham, thank you very much, Jude. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I, yeah, it won't reset it, but we're not in, we, we're not in shit anyway. So, you know, does it have any bearing on FFP whatsoever? Um, no, but it'll have bearing on what they can spend because it'll be the same figure. So, it, mm. you know, it's the, at the moment the money's not there, but if the money's there, they can still only spend so much. Mm. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Mm, mm. Um, Chris Wyatt, at Chris Wyatt 95 on Twitter. Uh, can you please thank Dan for taking time out to chat with me whilst I was stressed the other day? It really helped me out. Uh, now for the how long is a piece of string question. What percentage chance is there that a takeover will actually happen? What time frame is the question to that? Well, you know, yeah. um, if, 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 if what percentage chance is the one that will, ta- will happen before the heat death of the universe is like 100%? <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm uh, not convinced. <laughs> not until Satan's um, in the tilt and holding a scarf up and juggling snowballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's tickle me, ass. That's proper tickle me. Um, Good. It's it's all about time frame, isn't it? Yeah. Do I think it'll happen by before the start of next season? No, because really? I don't. Think so. Well, no, I don't think the whole thing will be completed by the start of next season. I think it could be very much underway, and we could know what's going to happen. But you know, all the paperwork needs to be signed off. So you think um, there's a likelihood we will know? I mean, realistically, when do you think we might know anything? Are we literally just all eyes on the stock exchange? If BSH are competent, we should know tomorrow. <laughs> well, we should I, literally we should know not. now. Yeah. We should, but but whether the will we will or not, there was a lot of talk of May the 16th as being a like it's a, a lag kind wagon of like, song. Is it? I, it is. I don't know that. It's a tune. Um, so. For, for example, the supporters forum meeting got pushed back to just after it, mm. as did another meeting. So maybe they're trying to get everything done for them because then, like three months from there, is the start of the season. So mm. I, I think we'll, I think we'll know something fairly soon. If it's not done before the start of the season, what do you see our transfer budget being? Nothing. Sweet FA. If it's not done fairly quickly, we are fucked. Really. Yeah, absolutely. Shit. Yeah, that, that's why I said it's you know like it needs to be done. People think I don't want it be to, to be done. They're fucking wrong. I want it to be done, and I want it done now. But mm. I want it done properly, because if it's not done properly, it will bite us on the ass. Mm. So and I'd rather not that happen. Put yourself in the shoes of my best mate Neil Moxley. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think he would say? to the sort of stuff you're saying to me tonight? I don't know. Um, I asked, I sent him a text saying, look, look, Neil, you know, I, saw, I, saw, I, re- I listened to your interview on Radio WM. Can you just tell me what's going on with, you know, with the stock exchange? Because you didn't mention it mm. and he didn't reply. Um, I don't know if he didn't reply because I'm not his best mate or if he didn't reply because he didn't ha- have the answer. But I asked him on Twitter and he's uh, on <clears throat> Monday and he said he'd come back to me today, Tuesday. Mm. He hasn't. Maybe he just doesn't know because he's not found out. Mm. Um, I, I I think Neil would understand what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. I think he understands that I know that things have to be done properly. And Neil is very much of the... He doesn't want someone like Bassini to take charge. He doesn't mm. want someone like, um, you know, the ne- the next tyre kicker to take charge. He wants someone proper to do it. Mm. He wants someone proper to do it and to take the club and to, you know, move it forwards. So I think he would, I think he'd accept, you know, that competence, you know, that competence needs to be in, in a, a thing, and that things need to be done properly. And he'd probably accept that we're kind of at the mercy, that we are at the mm. mercy of BSH. How we can hurry that on is a question I'm not too sure of the answer, but I don't think we will have to. I don't think we'll have to wait too long. I think we have to be patient. I think um, 
I saw one particular wet wipe asking uh, <laughs> asking Neil Muxley, well, has nothing happened since Saturday? It's like, come on, man, give the man a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Jesus Christ, it's not we're buying like um, a packet of sweets here. This is a £35 million deal involving, you know, a fucking stock listing, a club that's on its knees, a stadium that's owned by someone else. This is going to be a hard thing to do. I'll tell you one but, thing that, that did sort of fill me with a bit of um, positivity was Neil well, Moxley's positivity because that man is a bigger doom monger than you and that is saying something. Um, the, uh, he is, but he, he always, I'll tell you now, it always comes from a position of care. He cares so deeply. Oh, yeah, and, no, I, 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 mm, yeah. I, I, um, I, I can tell you, I'm going to tell you a Neil Moxley story. He'll on. probably kill me for telling you this, but go I'm going to tell you. Um, when McLeish left us for like across the expressway, most people kind of like, in, the, in McLeish's first press conference, most people were kind of like, nicey, nicey. Mm. Moxley wasn't. Moxley went, do you not think that you've tarnished everything you've achieved with Birmingham mm. City by crossing, you know? And McLeish gave him a standard blah, blah, blah. And Moxley went, I think you have. Mm. Fuck yeah. He called him a Judas to his face. Enough yeah, respect fine. for that. Enough respect for that. And this is why it kind of bugged me when people said Moxley's not a Blues fan, because he is. Oh, I'd he never question absolutely that. absolutely is. Never and he does that. care. Um, and every, a lot of what it, there, there's a lot of stuff that people don't know that's gone on over the last 18 months. I don't know if I'll ever come out. I'm not going to talk about it because I can't and because I don't want to. Mm. But I will tell you for a fact that Neil Moxie has done a lot and deserves a lot of praise. I'll tell you that for a fact now. And there are other people out there who people don't know. Mm. who have done an awful fucking lot, spent an awful fucking lot of money, and, um, yeah, they've helped kick this thing into the position it's in now. Mm. Mm. I, I'd and, never never question his, his fandom. Um, I, I hate that rhetoric anyway, that if someone says says or does something you don't like, you go, well, you're not a true fan. Unfortunately, they are. Even, even bad stuff when someone is, I don't know, homophobic or whatever on the terraces and they say you're not you're not real blues unfortunately they are and we have to own that person and it's up to how we deal with that so i think you can be negative and still be a blues fan <laughs> that that yeah. notion is ridiculous um it is neil's job to get people get eyes on his stories uh, yeah it's, it's neil's job to sell advertising space for his yes newspaper. yes so i i don't i don't begrudge him that job um but he is typically negative um, which he, when you he, talk about the blues it's hard not to be negative yeah, he sometimes. is taciturn he is taciturn and also he's like me in that um he gets asked like well he gets he probably gets 500 times notifications as mm. i do and i bet he gets pissed off with it because so, you know i do <laughs> yeah okay so just don't answer just don't answer. oh yeah but sometimes it's hard not sometimes it's hard not to take it personally sometimes you've had a bad day and you read it and you're Perhaps. like fuck you man mm. fuck you mm. um Perhaps. it is hard yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Um, but like I say, the fact that he's so positive and that interview is the most positive I've ever heard him yeah. fills me with joy because I think if yeah, you manage to, to get him positive, um, then the rest of us should be jumping for joy. Uh, absolutely. We just absolutely. hope to God it, it actually actually happens. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you, you know, the fact that... Um, and he's, he's positive about the right things, I think, because mm. he's like he's saying... He's not saying, oh, they're going to put like tons of money into the club or like, he's, you know, he's, the vibe I'm getting is the people doing this actually know what the fuck know they're, what they're doing. doing yeah. Which is what we want. Jesus and, yeah. Christ, that's what we need. Well, people always say, I, I want someone, who, I want a Blues fan, someone who cares about the club. I, I don't, I don't care. I want someone who knows I, how to I play a football club. Don't, I, I don't care if Blues fans work for the club. No, couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. I'd don't r- care I, if they're English, don't care if they're Portuguese, Spanish, Chinese, Dutch. I couldn't care less. As long as they know how to run a football club, don't care what they look like, where they come from. If they even like football, I'm not bothered. I'm really not, as long as they know how to run a football club. It's all about competency. All, all about, about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Um, even even mega, mega rich, obviously that's the dream for everyone. We all want a, an oil baron. But even if they're not, but they know how to spend the money they've got. Look at Brentford, they're not mega, mega rich, are they? But they know what they're doing. Right. Can I can I ask you a question? Of course you can. Can I turn the tables here? Because I'm curious to the answer. Go on. So... Newcastle United, bought, bought by uh, the Saudis, uh, mm. Saudi PIF, I can't remember what it stands for, something, mm. investment fund, which is um, run by a guy called Mohammed bin Salman, who's like dodgy. He's not dodgy, he's controversial. Mm. 
Save Blues were bought by a company owned by, and I'm just going to pull a name out of there, uh, Kim Jong Un. Yeah. And Kim Jong Un said, because he likes football, said, I want to buy this club. I want to put hundreds of millions into it to to buy players and to succeed. Mm. Would you be happy? That is a difficult question to answer. I will tell you my view on Newcastle before I answer that question. So when when Newcastle got took over, I delved into the comments section of various posts from Newcastle. Some of the homophobia I saw was disgusting. Obviously, the people were commenting saying, I can't believe you've been, you're welcoming these people because of their human rights record. And the replies from people from that country who agree with those human rights records were shocking I, I've never seen homophobia like it if I were a LGBT Newcastle fan I don't know how I would feel knowing that every single post Newcastle puts is going to get taken back to my sexuality and my choice of partner in life mm-hmm if that were to happen at Birmingham City, I think I would have to have a long, hard think about my choices in life. Um, I don't know how I'd react, is my honest answer, because it hasn't happened. But I would be doing my absolute utmost to try and keep the comments under Blue's posts as... Um, clean as possible and I would be arguing with every single prick that decided to put something derogatory on there it's a See, tough I, one it's a tough yeah, one yeah I, I agree with you and it's good to, it's interesting to talk about Blue's posts and derogatory stuff because sometimes like if you see Blue's Twitter on the official BCFC feed they like Rainbow Lacey's Day um, Holocaust Remembrance Day yeah. Eid and all that sort of stuff some of the comments on that yeah I know. This goes back to what I said earlier. People say they're not true fans. They are. They're our fans. They're our problem. We deal with them. Um, just saying you're not a real fan, it's not enough for me. If they say... There's a, a, a comedy series phone shop uh, and in it they're talking about lying to girls, basically. And the guy goes, if man say him a ting, then him a ting. And that's the truth. If, if these people say they're Blues fans, they're Blues fans. And it's up to us to clean our own streets. Um, yep. But yeah, you are right. We do get... It, it is a small portion, I will say that. Uh, and yep. do, do you remember that guy on Twitter a couple of years ago now who claimed that someone was racist to him in the stands? Yeah, I do remember that. And Blue's Twitter descended and said, we want to know his seat. We want to know where he is. We want to get the CCTV. We'll find a steward. We are going to sort this problem out. And that film we joy turns out it was all bullshit and the kid was lying for attention. But the way it galvanised the Blues fans into saying, mm. we are not standing for racists. Um gives me hope that if Kim Jong-un were to buy the club, uh, we would rally against the scumbags that suddenly appeared in the comments section. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it's just, it's a first, I, I, I'll be honest with you, it's a really tough one, I think, for everyone. Um, like Man City, owned by, um, you know, uh, basically Abu Dhabi. Mm. Not the greatest human no, not rights at all. people. No. It's sports um, washing, isn't it? Well, there's, there's a you could argue Birmingham City sports watching for Cambodia mm, you could in some mm. some ways mm. I mean like, not like we're, we're trying to squash their reputation mm. uh, maybe something else um, <laughs> but yeah that, that's getting into stuff that I can't talk about because it'll yeah. get both of us into trouble and maybe murdered do you know yeah I don't want to be murdered no thanks um, do you know what I think it'd be like it would be like your sister or your daughter marrying Kim Jong Un? No, because I you can say Villa fan. Then. No, no. Well, similar <laughs> enough, but it it is like someone has appeared in your family. How do you now deal with this? I don't know the answer. I don't. But what I I do feel sorry for those Newcastle fans who perhaps now feel a bit yeah. ostracised. But the, the the people who have took over Newcastle look like they're trying hard to brush off the human rights history of their country um i don't know it's a difficult question Dan. what would you do um i don't think people are going to like this um in all honesty if the saudis had bought 
St Andrews, I'd have been like, yep, see you later. That'd be I'm done. done. I'd be done. Hmm. Um, I'm probably, I, I have the same principles as you, but I'm a bit more of an arsehole about them, I think. Hmm. Um, I just can't do it. Like, um, I really, I really can't do it. And I, it, it grieves me like that sort of thing. And I, I can't keep my mouth shut either. Mm. I, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who can you know, I, I, I got a big mouth, a big pen, and mm. I would probably write something that would maybe get me murdered. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'd be like, Nope, Nope. Okay. Thanks. Mm. See you later. I'm off to do something else, which, um, so, for example, I am um, Harry Redknapp. When Harry Redknapp took charge of Blues, I did say, "That's it, fuck it." Really? Because I, I, yeah, I, I despise Harry Redknapp mm. um, for many reasons. And if they just said at the end of that season, "Look, here's your money in a brown envelope. Thanks for all you did. See you later," I would have been okay with that. Mm. But when that, when like they gave him a, a big fat contract for New Year, I was like, "Oh, this is only going to end one way." And guess what? It only yeah, it did. yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's it, I, I I see the perspective of keep politics out of football. I just care about the football side of things. I get that on Saturday. The, I've got this th- the thing with football is it's a working class game, and people get go to work all week and have to work for the man and get shouted at and moaned at by people, customers, bosses, whatever. Uh, Saturday is their chance to turn up at the pitch and call the bloke wearing black a fat wanker. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's cathartic. It's a, it's a release. And and there are many many people who do not care who owns us. Yeah, yeah, and they're entitled to that. They they're are entitled. absolutely entitled. I, to I that, see that know. side of it. To be honest, I understand it. There is times when when I think, oh, does it really matter? Like, there, there, there are times when I there are times when I think, fuck this. I, I'm sick of this. Yeah. I'm absolutely. I just want to play good football. Well, there are times like like this weekend. There have been times where I thought, you know what, Pfft, I don't care anymore. I'm yeah. done. Um, because it it's just exhausting. It mm. is exhausting. Um, mm. What can you do? Well, yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Um, let's get some questions. Uh, Kia, at Kia George. I'm guessing it's George Kia's full, real name. I don't really know. Uh, what is the most likely outcome in regards to the debts currently owed? Right. I think I've covered this one before, but happy yeah. to recap. Yeah. Um, when a buyer buys the club, what they're actually doing, then the club's not worth anything. They're mm. paying off a portion of the debts. The rest will get written off. That that'll be part of. It. So if a, if someone's doing due diligence right now, part of what they will be doing is looking at the number of looking at the amount of debt that um, BSH says there is, looking at the actual figures and making sure that these two figures are the same. Mm. Because um, yeah, remember when Carson Young bought um, uh, Blues and then found 11 million quid worth of debt that he yeah. didn't know about? Yeah. Did he do did he do shitty DD? Did um, I don't know, but he certainly got a payoff out, out of court. Hmm. And yeah, you don't you don't want to be in that situation where you're like, oh fucking, hell, I've got to go to court to get this back. You want to get, you go into the DD, and rich people, rich people won't be as bothered as people who are like on like got a budget for every penny. But hmm. most will like, are they taking the piss? Is everything right? Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 where the debt will go, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So that's um, thirty four million mm-hmm. is that essentially do you think bshl have just said that's what we value our debt at that's how much we're willing to cut our losses at yeah which was about the figure i said wasn't it it was didn't around I say, about that so that yeah didn't i say around 30 to 35 million and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that i knew i i i, I kind of like just put that figure together from like the things that there are or it sounded about right Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe they watched the, one of our podcasts and went, you know what? Them two know what they're talking about. Not Jeez. so much the, the idiot with the microphone, but yeah. The other guy, he knows his stuff. We hate him, but he knows his stuff. And thought, yeah, 35 million, we'll go with that. I think it's a possibility. Um, right, George Yeomans at Blues Geo. Love the previous three podcast guys. The things Dan has done for the Blues is, out, is astounding. My question is, who is your favourite Simpsons character? Oh, see, um, curveball that one. It. I'm gonna say at this moment in time, Ralph Wiggum. Okay, why? 
I Q2 choose him. Because <laughs> Ralph Wiggum, right? Ralph Wiggum is like, I mean, he eats crayons. You know, he's <laughs> like Clancy Wiggum, uh, Ch- uh, Chief Clancy Wiggum, his is dad's equally thick. Yeah. But he's innocent, and I kind of like that. And like, he has some great lines. Yeah. And you can see that moment when his heart rips into. you got to admire that, really, haven't you? Mm. I don't know who I go for. Comic book guy, I suppose, because he's grumpy and pessimistic and see, <laughs> he's like I, me. Yeah, yeah, I can see people saying, oh, you look like comic book guys. Like, <laughs> fuck you, I've got more hair. I'm glad you made that joke because I didn't want to, but I did think it. That's No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Also sticking with this theme, Bob at Bibble Bobbert. Mr. Ivory, your campaign seems to have the momentum of a runaway freight train. <laughs> Why are you so popular? <laughs> I read I that and it, I died a little. I was in bits. If I could do a C. Montgomery Burns impression, I would do one. And as I said, I like it's a fantastic quote. It's a fantastic yes, quote from a fantastic brilliant. episode. Um, yeah, and those fat cats in Washington, they'll have to like it. <laughs> of, all, of all the daft questions we get, that was uh, a highlight of mine. Uh, another one, Marv at Marv's back. Uh, is a sh- if a shark and a bear had a fight, who would win? Well, the obvious answer is, depends where it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would guess if it was, um, I would guess if it was in the water, sh- shark would win. But bears are pretty good in the water. I was going to say it depends how deep is this water we're talking about, and is it mm. salt water? What about a shark and a bear, both in spacesuits in space fighting? Ah, oh, hmm. I suppose you're looking at you're looking at the equipment provided there, and you're looking at training as that shark had. Like three years of jujitsu training. Yeah, yeah. Okay, belt. so okay, so so if a shark if a shark's in space, right, in a space suit, is the space suit filled with water? Oh, obviously, yeah. It's like a space tank. It's like future armor. The heads in, in the water, I assume. But then that that takes away his main weapon, doesn't it? Because his his weapon is his mouth, and if it's contained yeah. within a, a helmet, maybe maybe has like a, a jaw operated weapon, like a sort of claw, like a fin attachment. Yeah, or, or something like that, where like he bites on something, and the, the amount he bites on it, like like extends like. Oh, the fist I'm with you, like a, like sort of um, rock 'em sock 'em robot sort of thing. Something like that, maybe. I don't know. Possibly, but then the the bear's only got to slash the suit once, and then shark's yeah. dead. As soon as he puts a small rip in that, it's a it's a, a tough one, and it's worth doing its own podcast about, really. Elon Musk, bear versus shark in space. Yeah. You know it makes sense. Yeah, Elon, you get yourself a shark, because that seems like the more expensive one. We'll find a bear. We'll train him up. We'll down get him Hurst Street. Down Hurst Street. <laughs> we'll get him a few... Uh... I, I, mean, I qualify, really. <laughs> well, yeah, I? you do, yeah. yeah. We'll, get, we'll get Ivory trained up, get him a few jiu-jitsu lessons, get him a sparring a bit, uh, and we'll come back to, to you with an answer. Um, right, not many questions left. Serious one. Craig Hadley, at Craig Hadley. Uh, who runs the Blues Women Supporters Group. Does Dan know how much Blues spent each year for Blues Women to play at Solihull Moors versus how much it would cost to run a match day at St Andrews? I don't. Um, I have to admit that's something I'd have to look up. It's probably in the accounts. It's one um, I probably prepped you for, really, isn't it? No, that's no, fine. It's fine. I, I will look into You know what? I'll look into it and I'll see mm. if I can come back with a written answer. Um I feel for the ladies this year because I think um, the uh, last few seasons, uh, like of like crap, you know, like the Marta mm. Tejedor experiment and like all the stuff that. Oh, your audio's gone, Dan. I go, have a mute back. button, I, I, and I lent on it. There you go. Try again. Sorry. So, right. So, blues women are, are like paying the the debt, as it were, for like. The Marta Tejador, yeah, the, the, the shit Kyle Award went through. And it's really bad. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, it's another thing on BSHL's um, doorstep, you know, and they should invest more in the, uh, in the ladies' team. I'm going to throw something out there that people might not like. Um, you want a really good ladies' team? Go support them. Yeah. Um, Newcastle United, fourth tier team, 22,000 at St. James's Park. Bloody Blues, hell. Yeah, 22,000. Um, Blues struggled to get a thousand. Now it's actually a, what, what it was. I don't know if it still is, but it was a condition of the um, WSL license that you had to have a thousand fans a game. Really? Because they're trying to grow it. And I, I get that. So I, I see people like our oh, women shouldn't play football. Yeah, and I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. I think the biggest problem that people have is they see it just as another version of football. When mm. I think it's actually another sport, kind of. 
It's mm. not the same thing. And you have to go into it as watching. You're not watching women playing football. You're watching women's football. It's a different thing. The way I, the way I, obviously I, I host the Her Game 2 podcast and I'm quite involved with the Her Game 2 movement. The way I, I see it and put it to people is um, it's if you're going to measure it up against the men's team and the men's game, which has had decades and decades of investment and proper facilities and training and and unfortunately you you can't compare the two you if you want to compare it to maybe a youth setup fair enough that has similar funding but you're comparing two different worlds um and to just write it off as like you say women shouldn't play football get to fuck fuck off yeah we did didn't the asteroid kill all the dinosaurs yeah like come on man and if you want more on that, then please tune into the Her Game 2 podcast where you'll see me talking to lots of girls who have to deal with this bullshit day in, day out. Um, but like you said, you are right. If you want this to happen, I, I find with the Blues women team, something will go down. Um, someone will get sacked or someone will leave. And then for a brief time, people will care and they'll say it's an outrage and they won't go to the game that weekend because they never do. And it's almost like their knowledge of the women's team is the bad stuff that goes on. And that's all solely mm-hmm. what they're playing. Like in, um, in a couple of weeks, it's the 10 year anniversary of the women's FA cup win. Um, the club are putting a, a VIP event on and stuff with the, the team there. Karen Khan is going to be there and stuff. I haven't seen any blues fans talking about it. Don't I didn't think- even know about it. I didn't even know about it. I, w- I was at that game. I was at the women's uh, FA cup final Ashton gate. Mm-hmm. I've yeah, got the uh, press pass. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a yeah. wall. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, I didn't even know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it. I, I, I get that people want the women's team to succeed because, god damn it, I do. But like you say, if that's the case, support them. Like, yeah. And, and, and the, the, the irony is um, women get questions like, oh, if you like football so much, name the men's team. Well, you know what? If you care so much about the women's team, name them. Don't pretend that you give a shit when you're not willing to to show that. that that's in, in that's it. a good good in call. That is good yeah. good call. It is. And it, but the, like you say, they've been mistreated. Uh, I think Daz is the right man for the job currently. Um, Daz cares more than anything. Daz he was only interim, wasn't he? It was, was interim. He... That they've given it in permanently now, I believe. Oh, cool! Um, Excellent. I may be wrong. I'll, I'll check that. And if I'm wrong, I'll fact check it. Um, but I believe it has been given it permanent. Uh, he was um, he was assistant coach at West Brom, I think, before. And now he's, he's coach there. Yeah. I mean, he won manager of the of the month uh, last month. They only played two games. Yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. Because They beat the Villa the other day. Well, yeah, there you go. A relegated team beat the Villa. Um, yeah. And so, deservedly so, deservedly so. Oh, absolutely. I, I think the, the point um, Craig's getting out with that question is, can we get the women playing at St. Andrews? Um, so the, I know what the argument is against that. Go on. The argument against it is the pitch is shit. Mm. And, you know, like, it can't handle that many games a season. Mm. I I don't know if this is controversial. I'm not sure that St. Andrews is the right place for them to play. No. And the reason I don't think it's the right place for them to play is because I think it then introduces my, like the expectations from the males game. I used to like going to watch them at Solihull Moors or at Stratford Town. Hmm. And I expect, well, the Moors was really good because, like, I, I don't know if you've been to Moors, but yeah, yeah. back in the... I don't know what it's like now. I've not been for a few years because of COVID and whatnot. But hmm. back in the day, um, you had the clubhouse, you know, you had, like, the bar. And after the game, I used to hang, you know, you could hang out and you could chat with hmm. the team. And it was so nice. Mm. Um, you know, you could uh, have a, you know, you could have a conversation. Um, I was going to say something nice about Marcus Bignett, and then I remembered that he's done something really horrible, and that's why, yeah, we don't talk about him anymore. Correct. We don't talk about Marcus. Yep, yep. Um, but so, like players like I remember Ethan Mannion, Keris mm. Harrop. Um, there were others. You know, great to chat with, great to talk to. Really, really nice, down to earth people. And yeah, like I think I think the uh, one of my worries with women's football is that they're trying to Premier League it, and I think mm. the WSL is definitely going that way. Mm. And maybe relegation is not such a bad thing because Blues can go back to like, okay, fuck this, we're gonna like we're gonna go community, we're gonna like become a proper, you know, we're gonna push that really hard, we're gonna push like we're gonna play it Sully on Moors or Stratford Town or wherever else, and you know we're gonna push it as like a not like you're coming to a big stadium. We want fifteen thousand people there, but we want 
a capacity crowd that's cheering us on. Mm. We, we we don't want a bunch of day trippers. We want like a, a a core crowd that cheers us on. That you know that people get you know people get to know each other at the games and they they mix with each other and the, you get a core support. Mm. I don't yeah. know. Am I am I am I am I in the wrong ballpark? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know, and that's partly why I do these her game two podcasts because I'm not a woman and I don't fully understand all this stuff. Uh, and, and I like talking to people who can teach me things such as yourself. Um, I don't know. I'll put it to the girls and I'll find out for you. Um, yeah, I've, I've been. I'd be really because inter- same same position. I'd be really interested to know. Mm. All I'd I know be- is that the the Bristol Rovers girls, the Gas girls, played at um, the, the men's stadium the other day and they had the time of their lives and they absolutely loved it. They put the game on after the men's game uh, well, and they were made up, but their ground is smaller than us. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what it comes to, you know, if they, if, if it's better for them to play at St Andrews than play at St Andrews, I can think of reasons why it's not, but I, I could easily be wrong and if mm. I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, you know, I'm just spitballing. Yeah. We're talking to the Her Game 2 girls. Question from Emily Drakeley. Uh, what would you like the club to what would you like to see the club do to make things better for fans day to day? Um I think she she's referencing things like the um the tampon machine. Yeah, um, can you believe the amount of shit? Oh, heard? ridiculous, isn't it? The people having a problem Did- with that. You've got to be some very insecure cretin to have a problem with that. Um, but yeah, obviously we've we've got the better food stands and things now. Is there anything else you'd like to see the club do day to day? Win games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wouldn't we all, mate? Wouldn't we all? But not well. That's kind of the facetious sense, but it's actually the only one I can truly think of because the one thing that will bring people back to the game is if we keep winning them. Uh, there's a lot of cynicism about you know the street food stuff, which I kind of want. I like. I think it's a good idea, but I also understand the cynicism in this tough time when people don't have as much money because prices have gone up and like you know cost of electricity and all that's gone up and people have less disposable income it's a bit harder for people to justify you know spending like seven quid on a hot dog or whatever Mm. and uh, i get that um i am 100 percent on the idea of uh tampon machines the club are doing the right sort of things you know um every every week i see pictures not only from the street food sort of stuff which which looks great on oh, like yeah, Instagram. It yeah you know 40 scrand loves us oh yeah 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 but like the little you know like the um the the, the little um the, the hub outside the family area that sort of thing looks good you know mm-hmm. the, the community hub outside the cup car park in the cup car park that sort of thing looks good i think from a club point of view what you what what you've got to try to do is to capture fans to come to not turn up at three o'clock but to turn up at half one two o'clock and spending money at the club make a day of it at the ground it's it's hard to do because you know it is hard to do but uh, i i don't envy ian dot in that job because you know like i know they've got the happy abode and bar and stuff like that and people go well the beer's wank blah 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 Mm. but you know what do people want a cheese room yeah yeah it's true um did did, actually did you see at I think it was at Spurs, the amount of people who were pitch side before the game. No. So it was either Spurs or Man City. I can't remember. the. I think it was Spurs because it was a new stadium. They've got something called the Tunnel Club. Mm. And basically, you pay a lot of money. You get to hang around like in that sort of area before the game. And okay. So like the whole, like it was looked like an American football game, you know, when they have Really like, all on the sidelines. Yeah, it was yeah. unbelievable. No I was way. thinking, I wonder how much bloody money they're making off that. Probably an absolute fortune. I mean, I know we can't do that shit, mainly mm. because people are laying it on the pitch or whatever. Yeah. But um, there, there, there's got to be, there's, there, there's got to, be, you, you've got to think a little bit outside the box sometimes. Mm. I think, you know, I'm not sure what uh, what the answers are because that's I'm not an ideas person mm. really. Mm. But let's just get the basics right for fuck's sake. Definitely, definitely. I've just had one quick scroll through Twitter, see if there's any questions <coughs> coming while we were talking. Uh, I'll mm. just just read this one from Was. Uh, who's been a guest on Fat Lads numerous times. Uh, why do you keep cancelling Was off your podcast, Mark? Everyone says he's the best guest you have on there. Mark, takes me back. Mark, Mark, where are you, Mark? Uh, just kidding. This question is for Dan. What's the biggest animal you could kill barehanded? Uh, no, no animals. Uh, no animals. Um, he's live put, animals. Uh, he's put no animals harmed in real life. <laughs> um, biggest animal I could kill barehanded. Yeah. Is it a bear or a shark? I don't think so. Um, I've certainly killed fish. Um, mm. so I could probably do a chicken. Chicken's the biggest. 
Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't think I could go that far. Okay, okay. There you go, Was You got your answer. You got your answer. Right, that's exhausted all my questions, mate, and we're nearly at the two-hour mark. So I suppose it's all eyes on, on the, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange for the next few days. Um, you've set an, an alert up, haven't you? Didn't you got alerts on your phone for it or something? I, I've had alerts on, the, on BSHL since 2011. Really, so, but um, I did post a tweet um, yeah, on how uh, yeah, so it's on how to do it. Like, if you really want to, um, what they do is um, they they will send you an alert either on the half hour or on the hour mm. if there's been a a um, announcement in the previous half hour. Um, I would say that some announcements are like guff, like every month is monthly returns means nothing. Mm. So you know, don't get too excited and. They are like really dry and really hard to read. Mm. Um, but if it's something you want, then and you could just sit and go to hxnews.hk and just click refresh if you're, you know, that bored at work. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, it'll happen. I haven't it, done that because I figure the minute it happens, I'll get told because someone will tweet it. Uh, yeah, my, my, I'll know because my phone will like start vibrating. Yeah, off the exactly. Table. Yeah, yeah. I, I figure. I'll find out when it happens, so I'll, mm. I'll just I'll just wait. Right, have we covered everything you want to go over, Dan? Is there anything you you wish I'd have mentioned but didn't? I can't think of anything. Uh, All I can think of is that there is a, a a pint in the pub with my name on it. That sounds like a good idea. Get yourself to that pub now, mate. You've earned it having to sit with me for nearly two hours. Dan, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's always an absolute pleasure. I can honestly say this has been the most enjoyable one we've done. Uh, I think. I Don't enjoy- you say that every time? I do because I genuinely think I enjoy them more and more every time. Um, I feel like we've got to know more of Dan Ivory this time, which which is, is my wheelhouse. I like that sort of stuff. So it's been an absolute pleasure, Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'm sure you'll be back as soon as your phone sets on fire from all the Hong Kong Stock Exchange notifications. Um, but yeah, that's it for Fat Lads Going Goal, uh, Meeting with the Mayor Part 4. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, and thank you for joining me, Dan. Thank you. Ta-ra. Keep right on. Keep right on.